at Purdue. And they're a very technical school, as you know, they're an engineering school. And they said, we have our tech week and we want you to come talk. And I said, but I'm not technical. And they said, that is why we want you to come talk to us, because basically they don't get non-technical people to talk to them very much. And they are very aware, Jamie Moeller was very aware that um, techni technology does not a full life make. And so I decided to do a talk. And, but they wanted me to do a talk, a technical oriented talk. And so I, 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 I started to work on this. And I was going to call it, initially I was going to call it, um, um, why are today's movies so full of crap? <laughs> but I thought that was kind of not good. And then I sounded like a cranky old man going, get off my lawn. But uh, so now I, I, I call it technology in the movies. But I, and that's what it's kind of titularly titled. And that was what they called it at Purdue. But really, as I worked on it, I started to call it the magic button. What's the magic button? Now, I've heard about the magic button since the early days. And I want to I um, um, orient you to my view of animation. I'm an animator, and I've been an animator for almost professionally for 40 years. Uh, but when I started, the big technological breakthrough was a Xerox machine. We could Xerox the cells. We could do the drawings on the animation paper, and instead of hand inking them, we could put them through a Xerox machine. And the first Xerox machine I rented in order to do that was the size of a small car. That was where the technology was. Just as loud. Uh, yeah, and, and it didn't really work either, Terrence, because when you put the drawing on the glass template and you turned up and press press, it did transfer the drawing to a cell, but, it, but Xerox, Xerography used, and still probably does, uses a heat element, and it would melt the cell. Not, not entirely, the cell would come out okay, but it had like streaks on where the rollers would push the cell, normally with paper, through, and you would see roller marks because it was hot enough to, to allow the cell to be scratched. So it didn't work. Eventually, we got another machine. And by the time I was, uh, as the years went by, we got a machine that actually worked. It didn't scratch the cell, and da, da, da. we were able to do that. But that was the state of the art. Uh, video games at that time were my favorite, Pong. Uh, actually, Pong came in a few years after that. And then there was something called Tank. And then eventually Pac-Man. You know, those are the video games. There was none of the, the what they have now. And I did see, uh, fortunately, the ver my very first animation computer in 1978. Uh, we saw a salesman came by selling an animation computer and using the same lines you hear today. If you buy this animation computer, you'll be able to do an animated feature all by yourself. Never need anything else. Never need anything else or anybody. You could just take this animation computer. And it was a terrible animation computer. It was awful. Uh, it, it had you know, 168 colors and several levels. And, and to prove how good it was, they had taken a couple of drawings from, a, from an animated film called Raggedy Ann and Andy, which was made in New York. Maybe oh, yeah. some of you have seen it. Dick Williams was uh, the director on that. And they had taken Tissa David's drawings of, of I think it was Tissa David, who was an animator, uh, drawings of, of, An of Annie Curtsy, and they'd taken the two key drawings, what we call finally the key frames, and they didn't between them. Is that the, is that the movie that has the terrifying candy monster? In yeah. It? Okay, so yeah, that's what scared me as a little kid. Yes, yeah. that's yeah. the one. Yeah. That, that, that was animated, that, and the Taffy monster was animated by Cornelius Cole, also called Corny Cole, who still teaches to this day at CalArts. Um, Anyway, and Art Babbitt, it was Art Babbitt's last work, he did The Camel. Uh, and it was done in New York, and they were hoping it would reinstitute the New York animation world, but it really didn't. Anyway, um, uh, so she, they had taken two drawings of Annie curtsying, and they had in, and in between it, and it looked like she melted. <laughs> it was like this drawing, this drawing. Okay, computer, blah, you know, <laughs> not, not good at all. But if you bought that computer, you can make a feature all by yourself. And that is the magic button. The magic button is a machine that when you press the button, stuff comes out. And that is indeed how a lot of work is sold today. It is sold on the uh, aspect that if you, if you buy this machine, uh, you will, it, will, it will do the creativity for you. 
And that's not the case. Anyway, while I just, when I got started, I said, how am I going to start this talk? How am I going to start this talk? I've been teaching an animation course in history of animation for a long time. And during the course, I show a, 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 a film, uh, Star Wars. Somebody in this room is associated with this film. I don't know who it would be, but he's wearing a bowling shirt. Um, and I show a sequence. And I've been doing this for about 10 or 12 years. And I said, well, why don't I start with that little sequence I show in my history of animation course? And I'm going to show it to you right now. Hopefully, if all works here. That's not it. Mm -hmm. Let this thing won't wind up again. It did. There it is. I'll go to the As I see the space book, you will never find the more wretched hive of scum and villainy. This is the first. This is the original shots from the first issue. Here it is again. This is the new version done in 1997, 20 years later. You will never find the more wretched hive of scum and villainy. We must be cautious.
There you go. Same shots. Which one's better? Which one do you like better? First one, of course. <laughs> the second one, because it paid a lot of bills. <laughs> Which one do you like better? Why? No, nothing was actually. I mean, they were still using optical. The the yeah, and they cleaned it up in the second one. And the other thing was they used a film stock in the first one that faded quickly, believe it or not, the a regular film stock. And that's why the first one, and that's the only release. They've never released the first one on DVD except once, and I have it. And it was a special edition where it was the, it was actually the 1997, and if you bought the special edition, you got the first one as well. And that's what you saw. I saw the first one as a kid. Actually, I was an adult already. And uh, was, uh, we loved it. And it was uh, still using optical printers and stuff. And they did clean up the bad mats. Yeah, and they, they, it, it, you know, they made the, the film is no longer faded. And, that, and that's great. But generally speaking, when I ask that question, and I've asked it in many audiences, I get the same answer. I don't know if that's going to continue, because many people, the first time they've ever seen Star Wars, is the enhanced version, the new version, with all the extra CG in it. Um, the best answer I ever got is a little bit like yours, Terrence. I was teaching it at SIGGRAPH. This is part of a big, long, day-long history of animation class. And maybe someday I'll come back here and teach it to you guys. It's lots of fun. But I always ask the same question. And generally, about 80% of the people like the first one, and about 20% of the people like the second one. And so it was about the same. And I just picked one guy at random, just as I picked you. And I said, why did you like it? He liked the second one. I said, why did you like the second one? And he said, because it amazes me how many times Lucas can re-release this thing and make more money. <laughs> Which I thought was the best answer ever. And then, that's a new answer. It helped me pay a lot of bills. But indeed, it, 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 the question becomes, do visual effects a better movie make? And the answer is, sometimes. I asked this of a guy who's in charge of the technology at DreamWorks. When, when I was talking about doing this, and I would go to all my friends, I'm doing this thing, or I don't want to sound like a cranky old man, blah, 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 blah. And he said to me, name me a good film that's made worse by visual effects. And I could not do that. I could certainly name films that are not very good that have been made better by visual effects. But the fact is, there are some drawbacks to that as well, that technology, the technology of today's visual effects. Um, and 